Pray with me. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing unto you this day, with whom we have our beginning and our end in you, our inhale and our exhale. Amen. So I was told that I should forewarn you that this is a rather passionate, a little bit of a rant. So. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Yeah. There are times in our lives when we have experienced something that changes us. Whether those experiences have happened within our careers, our family relationships, our friends, or within our faith communities, we know we have been changed. And those changes can be very small or they can be very big and profound changes in how we think and interact with the world around us. These experiences have both a negative and a positive impact on us. We know we have changed, and people around us also notice we are different. Some may even comment or question that something is different about us, and we may choose to explain what has changed and the circumstances that brought about the change they are seeing. About 15 years ago, I was doing my internship as an educator with a congregation in the Presbyterian Church. My job was to integrate the new curriculum and develop the children's ministry. One Sunday, I was telling the story of Jesus and the children. Our children gathered around in a circle waiting patiently for the story to unfold. I brought out each wooden figure and started to tell the story. One day, people were bringing their children to see Jesus. Jesus' disciples started to send them away, saying that Jesus was too busy with the adults. At this point in the story, a little boy of about six years old yelled out, That's not fair. <laughs> Jesus wouldn't say that. Jesus loves us and wants to see us. That moment, 15 years ago, changed in many ways, defined for me a big part of my ministry. From that moment, I knew within me that God required me to act. Part of my calling would be to advocate for the full inclusion and rights of children within the church. Fast forward 15 years later, and I still believe part of my calling is to advocate for the full inclusion and rights of children. This advocacy occurs in many ways that are kind of behind the scenes, they're subtle, but on occasion there comes a time when I must speak publicly challenging and prompting people to respond to injustices that affect the development and well-being of our children. Today is one of those days. <laughs> Over the next week, families will be busy getting ready for another school year. Stores will be extra busy as parents buy the necessary supplies of food for lunches and snacks. Kids will be picking out and trying on their new clothes for the fall. Teachers will be in their classrooms preparing lessons as they get ready to welcome their new class of students. For some children, this will be the very first day of school as they enter junior kindergarten. For other children, this will be their last year as they graduate high school. Some may be starting new school as they have graduated or moved. It is a busy and stressful time for families and educators. This year will be even more stressful. As some of you may know, the provincial government has repealed the health and physical education curriculum. They are replacing it with the 1998 sex ed curriculum. The results of this is that our children will not be educated in school about cyberbullying, 
sexting, sexual orientation, gender identity, same-sex marriage, or consent. I don't know about you, but for me, I find this rather alarming. This decision affects over 2,460 students and over 40,000 teachers in our province. This decision means that families with two moms or two dads <coughs> will have their stories <coughs> silenced. It means children and youth's lived experience of their gender expression will be silenced. It means queer youth who struggle for acceptance and inclusion will experience more bullying, ridicule, and perhaps violence. They will be at an even greater risk of suicide because their voices will be silenced. Our children and families will be further isolated, and that isolation will very quickly turn into loneliness. And those feelings of loneliness and despair will fester and grow. Our children and youth will experience higher levels of anxiety and depression than they already do. Addictions, mental illness will increase, and those affect children's abilities to learn. Schools will no longer be safe places to learn and develop and grow. And this is a huge issue. This is not just an education issue. It's a human rights issue. This is about discrimination and othering people. This is an issue that MCC London and MCC Toronto need to speak out about. Our voices need to be heard on this issue. We fought for the rights to be included as LGBT people respected and protected under the law. We fought for our rights to marry, to have families, and now these very rights are being challenged. Our children's rights are being challenged. Our children's safety is being challenged. The provincial government is putting our teachers and children at risk. They are pitting parents against teachers asking them to phone in if the teachers are not adhering to what the government has said they're putting in place. They are leaving our children more vulnerable than ever to cyberbullying and acts of violence. As people of faith, we cannot sit back and do nothing. One of the paths to God is the life of Jesus. Today's scripture tells us that Jesus' reaction to his disciples sending the children away was outrage. Jesus saw the children were being treated in an unfair way and he took action and spoke against what his disciples were doing. I believe that is a very fitting response to what is happening in our province right now. We are called to be outraged. We are called to action to speak out against what is wrong and work towards change. That is what God requires of us. So far, students have held protests at Queen's Park. The Elementary Teachers Union has also held a protest at Queen's Park. School boards throughout Ontario are speaking out against this decision. Justice for Children and Youth and the HIV and AIDS Legal Clinic of Ontario are organizing to represent those applicants who wish to come forward and file applications to the Human Rights Tribunal of Ontario. And parents are suing the government. In Toronto, our, our MP in the Danforth area, Peter Tavins, and our school board trustees have held two meetings over the summer with concerned parents and community members. They were discussing ways to respond to take action. And they are working on spreading the word with local parent councils. Community members and parents are being encouraged to support their local schools and their teachers as they figure their way through this minefield. What does God require of you? To become active. 
to sign petitions, talk to parents, join protests, support teachers in your local schools. The provincial government will be holding consultations about the current curriculum. There will be online surveys that will need to be filled out. There will be telephone top town halls in every region of Ontario. We need to get the word out to our parents. Parents and organizations across Ontario are told that they can hold their own forums and present detailed proposals to the Ministry of Education. This is an opportunity for you and our faith communities in your areas to partner with other organizations and work on proposals. We cannot sit in our pews and watch. We must actively participate. Many of you may be sitting here thinking, this has nothing to do with us. It is not our issue. We don't have children. Is this an issue that parents and teachers need to address alone? Well, I'm here to tell you that it is not. This is our issue. This, this decision will affect how you and I will be treated as we age. Yes, as LGBTQ+, we are protected under the Human Rights Code, but we all know how easy it is for those rights to be violated and taken away. Just look at what the government's doing. In about 10 to 20 years from now, when you and I will be 60, 70, <laughs> 80, maybe even 90, we <laughs> need to be aging also too quickly. But I need for us to start thinking about this. Students who are just graduating from high school now, or who are just starting kindergarten, in 10 to 20 years, they will be adults. It will be our children who are going to be our politicians, our educators, our lawmakers, our activists, our medical personnel, first responders, military personnel, designers, planners, public servants, writers, news reporters, clergy scientists, explorers, tech support, and the list will go on and on. They will be caring for us. Do we not owe it to ourselves to make sure that they have access to an education system that will truly prepare them for the real world? Do we not owe it to them to make sure their childhood, their growing up experience is protected and safe from abuse, from bullying, from violence, prejudice, ignorance, homophobia, transphobia, racism. It will be a world where you and I may need them to advocate for our rights. I have heard many a story of LGBTQ plus seniors who are afraid that they may have to go back into the closet as they prepare to move into senior residence, assisted living facilities, and hospice care. We owe it to ourselves to make sure that those who will be in positions to care for us, our children, are fully equipped to do so. What does God require of us? I think God requires us to be outraged and to act and to seek what is just and right for ourselves and for our children and for our world. Amen. Amen.